Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We had some uh, great things happen this week. It's always busy around here. We had a great send-off for uh, Margaret Rutger yesterday, 95 years in the faith, and the family was here to celebrate her, uh, her moving from life into eternal life. And it was uh, just a great... Uh, Great source of inspiration for all of us. Also, this, this week we had some of our uh, uh, faithful come around and we went Christmas caroling down at the, we started at the preschool and through the rest of the school. Now, if you ever want to see the look of terror on young people's faces, you dress up a bunch of adults with uh, Santa hats and go barging into the room singing Christmas carols and the look of shock and awe was all over their faces. It was so much fun. It reminds me of the fact that some people... They know the story, but they don't kind of get the meaning. And we will face that this season. Kind of know the story. We know the things that are supposed to happen, but the meaning behind it sometimes gets lost. So something simple, just thinking about today, about just the joy of Christmas. The joy of Christmas. We think of ourselves as being part of this, this journey to Bethlehem, but it's not entirely true, is it? It's not our journey. It was the journey of Mary and Joseph, specifically the journey of Mary and Joseph and Jesus. Actually, it's the journey of God. It's God's journey into our world. God making special efforts to come into our world to be with us. So, what is this Christmas joy? What does it mean to you to even have this joy? Can you separate joy from just mere happiness? From just mere happiness. And some of us might say, oh, I'd be glad just to have a little happiness, Pastor Ken. That would be nice. Happiness. I can't even think about joy yet. I'm trying to get to the happiness part. Well, let's take a look at that today. Skeptics are welcome. Always welcome here. So, uh, in this section of Isaiah, the prophet, 700 years before the birth of Christ, writes, And the wilderness and a dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. The crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. It's talking about there's a change coming, something from dry to growth. Something from sadness to joy is about to happen. And that will happen in the birth of Christ our Lord. There's a difference between willpower and the supernatural change of the Holy Spirit gives us. If you go into your bookstores today, they are flooded with ways that we can increase our willpower. Read this, do that, take this diet, follow this instructions here. It'll increase your willpower, your strength, your personal ability to go forward and conquer. But that's not what the Bible is about, is it? The scriptures are not about increasing your willpower. They're about having us open ourselves up to the gift of the Holy Spirit. Something far greater, far more eternal than just willpower. Religion says, if you live by the rules as you ought, God may accept you. But the Bible's not about rules and religion. It's about God coming into our world and living with us. To obtain happiness, forget about God, death, pain, and acquisition of anything, and your worries will be over. This is kind of our modern mantra of the day. If you can just kind of forget about everything, let everything go, your expectations, forget about God, death, pain, acquisition of things, then you'll be happy, you'll find happiness if you can get rid of all this stuff, if it were possible, right? C.S. Lewis writes, the only place outside of heaven where you can be perfectly safe from all the dangers and hurts of love is hell. If you've got children... If you have special people in your lives, you will find hurts. That goes, goes along with the package. Because we just bump into each other. We hurt each other. 
accidentally, on purpose, whatever. That's part of the human package. We step on each other's toes, we get in each other's ways, we say the wrong thing at the wrong time, and it's just part of who we are. That's why we have to be people who are forgiven so we can remember to forgive and forgive and forgive. It keeps us family. If you're going to buy a book today, it's always going to have these things. And the top five components of happiness, being possessed of the basics, you've got to have food, shelter, good health and safety, get enough sleep, have relationships that matter to you, take compassionate care of others, and have work that can interest or engage you. That's really happiness. I mean, that's all there is to life. These things, food, shelter, a bed, get enough sleep, find a good job, and that's it. That's all this life has to offer. Without Christ, it is. And you're lucky if you get this far. Because most people can't even get this. But the scriptures have something else to say for us. Because if we buy into this thinking, it's simply singing in the rain. It's simply an attitude. It's simply making lemonades, lemonade out of lemons, right? It's an attitude. But the Bible's not even about attitude. It's not about getting your attitude right. For joy is something far greater than just getting an attitude. What is it? 316. 316. If you think about it, you go, well, it's not 316 yet, so we must be in John 316. For God so loved the world that he sent his son into the world. Whoever believes in him shall never perish but have eternal life. And that, what we forget, is also the Christmas story. It's a Christmas story for Nicodemus and for the people in that town. Because whenever Christ too comes to us, that is Christmas. It's not the nativity story, but it's the Christmas story over and over again. It's the joy coming to people knowing that God loves us first. That is the meaning of Christmas. God coming to us, whether it be a little baby or as a teacher, no matter where we are in life. And people are still opening themselves up and finding the meaning of Christmas. Each and every day it'll happen this year again. And the joy of Christmas will come to them. It's not like for God so loved the world, it's God hugged the world. For God so hugged the world. And that's what God is about. That's what Christmas is about. God coming and hugging us in our lives, no matter where we are. Hugging us first, no matter what we feel, what we've done, what we think of ourselves, what our expectations are, God comes and hugs us. The gospel shows you the magnitude of your danger. Unless you're really studying the scriptures, we don't even know what we've been saved from. We think it's just another form of happiness. Joy is just another form of happiness. Yeah, it's just, you know, God's tacking on to our already good or fairly good life. We don't even realize where we were headed. The danger we were given, the, the cliff we were headed for, the waterfalls that we were riding. And if you don't get that, you're not going to get the joy you have no appreciation of what God has done for us. Because the gospel shows us also the magnitude of Jesus' pain, what he did for us, our sins, the sins of the whole world that he took upon himself. And if you're not clued into God's word, you're not going to get that either. You're going to be always trying to make lemonade out of lemons or singing in the rain doing something to give yourself a good attitude you'll never find joy because joy comes in knowing Christ and what he's done for us and why he's come into this world you don't know how to be grateful until you know how bad it was what you've been saved from that's the joy of Christmas when you know that. 
So where is Christmas joy? Jesus lost his life, lost his joy, so we could have joy. It's trading our sins for his joy. Our punishment for his life. Our bad for his good. If we just see the tree, which is so beautiful and full of goodness and gifts and hope and promise, if you see the gifts in it, but don't see the wood in the tree, then you get the story, but you don't get the meaning. It's like the man here looking at the Christmas tree finally looks up. Oh, that's what they're looking at. That's what they're looking at. Charlie Duke. One of the astronauts of Apollo 16 was very successful. He spent over 70 hours on the moon with his crew. Loved being an astronaut, loved his life, loved everything. But one day he walked into his wife's Bible study to pick her up. Came a little bit early and was listening to what the women were saying at their Bible study. And got caught off guard because the joy of Christ came into him. He overheard the message through this women's Bible study of Christ. And Christ came into his heart. And he said after that day, all those times of being on the moon do not compare with the joy of walking on earth with Christ. For joy comes and finds us. We can't find it. It's not a journey to go find joy. It's not picking up a book and finding joy. It comes to us. It's the Holy Spirit. It's God's gift to us, the joy of Christ. And it's abounding this time of year. It's there all the time. Every day of the year, 365 is there 24-7. It kind of abounds at this time of season. It's there for all of us. And it's beyond happiness. Because joy means Jesus owns you. You no longer belong to yourselves. Jesus owns you. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. Jesus owns us. And Paul says, but God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Romans 5, 8, while we were yet sinners, in all our trying, in all our mustering up our attitudes and our goodwill and our happiness and reading all those books, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the joy. Beyond happiness. Beyond happiness. So what we need to do is find in the ornaments, in the presence, to look deeply. Because in that tree is the wood. That is the meaning of Christmas. The wood for the cross that brings us the joy. The joy unspeakable. The joy of the Lord. And that is what we share in the meaning of Christmas. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll receive our tithes and our offerings. <laughs>